Welcome to this Market Insights series. I'm Julia Lee, an equity strategist from Bell Direct. And today it's my great pleasure to be joined by Peter Harper, who's the head of capital market at BetaShares. Today we're looking at tips for trading with exchange traded funds. And when it comes to exchange traded funds, they've only grown in popularity, not only here, but also across the globe. However, when you're using them for a short term trading strategy rather than a longer term portfolio, there can be some stumbles that traders can come up across. So we thought we'd pick Peter's brain today in giving some tips to traders when trading with ETFs. Peter, thank you so much for your time. Today, I just wanted to start by looking at ETFs as a short term trading tool. Now, a lot of people use exchange traded funds in longer term portfolios. Is there room to use ETFs when short term trading? Yeah, look, a really good question, Julia. And, and funnily enough, if you look at the US market now, ETFs are about one in every $4 traded on the New York Stock Exchange. So that's about 25% of all value traded in New York. Now, another way to look at that is the biggest ETF in the world uh, trades about four times the amount of the biggest stock in the world, which is Apple. So when you look at numbers like that, it's, it's really clear that these are by no means buy and hold investments or purely buy and hold investments. They're very much used by both long term investors, but very much by active traders as well to get those short term exposures. And a couple of other examples of that is ETFs give access to asset classes that you, know, you couldn't access through just ASX listed companies. So things like currencies or commodities like oil or gold or perhaps some um, country exposures like Japan or, or Europe. Um, or even you know, for some investors, directional trading such as um, short funds or, or gear funds for, for those who deem those strategies appropriate. And finally, some words of advice or any tips that you have for traders, Peter? Uh, if I look at top tips for traders, I'd probably say, first of all, always check the INAV. Another thing I'd, uh, I'd definitely suggest is that uh, traders use limit orders rather than market orders. Uh, we talked about the liquidity of an ETF being based on the liquidity of the underlying assets. Um, and if, for example, the, the spreads in the underlyings uh, widen, then you would expect ETF spreads to, to widen and, and conversely narrow accordingly. Um, so if you use a market order, there's always the chance, whether it's a share or an ETF, that the market could move substantially between when you press the button to put the trade on and, and when that trade actually reaches the market. So the simplest way around that is using limit orders. So you know that you are, you are setting a limit on the buy or sell price that you're comfortable achieving. Um, another one to probably think of uh, would be just think about the, uh, the, whether the markets are open that you're trying to trade. So for example, um, uh, the Japanese equity market opens two hours after the Australian market. So a Japanese equity ETF will be open from 10 a.m., the Aussie time, uh, trading time, but uh, the market maker will be providing what's known as risk pricing because the underlying Japanese market is closed. When that Japanese market opens two hours after Sydney, the market maker will be able to provide live pricing and therefore you'll probably see the spreads contract. So you'll always get better pricing in, in live markets than you will um, over ETFs where markets are closed. And for some markets, for example, the US market, there's no overlap between, um, between the Australian trading zone and the, and the US time zone. Um, so just something to, to, to consider there for investors. That was Peter Harper, the head of capital markets for BetaShares, talking about exchange trader funds and tips for traders. I'm Julia Lee from Bell Direct. Hope to see you next time.